So this is not looking good for Giants fans whatsoever. So Daniel Jones in training camp has missed several throws. However, uh, according to several reports, the Giants still believe, meaning uh, Joe Shane and Brian Dable, still fully believe in Daniel Jones. I want to actually play some of these throws because these are bad. These are some of the throws in training camp that he's completely missing. And these are not difficult throws to make. This one is a deep ball throw. Malik Neighbors tries to make a play on it, but it's underthrown. Normal situation, that would probably be intercepted if, if a cornerback turns the head around or a safety. This one, another deep throw. Over the head of uh, Darius Slayton, I believe. This one may be the, or no, this interception, excuse me. A very, very bad throw that got picked off. This is probably the worst one. Wandale Robinson's about 20 yards of separation, overthrows it. And uh, this final one might also be the worst one. An overthrown screen pass. And not only that, this one shows a great offensive line of the New York Giants. Kayvon Thibodeau runs right past Jermaine Illuminor, who is their brand new offensive tackle. Everyone's raving about a nice bolstered offensive line. Well, this is really showing it. Lack of communication. Kayvon Thibodeau would have smoked Daniel Jones if he was playing for the team or the quarterback and get hit. So not a good look for a quote-unquote bolster offensive line and Daniel Jones, who once again, I'm going to preface this, I got hate for for not putting him in my top 10 quarterback list to start last year because he wasn't a top 10 quarterback. Uh, I would like to know, though, uh, what are your expectations for the 2024 New York football Giants? Well, uh, Jones is uh, he's being evaluated now on whether to keep him on the current deal or release him at the end of the, the year here. A chance to find their next uh, franchise quarterback. I don't think Drew Locke is their franchise quarterback, who's the current backup. So if Daniel Jones doesn't show what he's got this year and live up to uh, the promise of that contract he was given, forty million bucks a year uh, for four years, then I uh, think he's out of there and uh, they'll release him. I mean, it's a short-term gig, and really, it's his alone. Uh, I don't think that uh, they see the others uh, uh, on the on their. Pr- principally Drew Locke, giving him any competition here, at least at the beginning of the season. If they wind up losing their first five games, then uh, maybe he's on the bench and uh, Drew Locke winds up getting a chance. But right now it's his to his to lose. Uh, he's getting to show uh, that, that he's healthy, at least. He's capable of uh, competing in the training camp drills. He's coming off that ACL injury and also a neck injury. Uh, he said he felt good the first day in the 11-on-11s. So he kept the ball moving, uh, stayed out of negative plays, he missed a few throws. He checked down on, on a handful of times but uh, seemed healthy. Uh, he's got to improve uh, uh, following his career worst marks uh, last year and a variety of efficiency metrics uh, before that torn ACL in Week 9. His comment was, um, I'm not consistent enough. I, I was it's, certainly I was affected by the injuries. I got to get the ball out quicker to the playmakers. We'll all be better together in 2024, generally because I have a better wide receiver core with Malik Neighbors, and also the defense was improved. Um, but so far, what we've seen, and you showed it there on the clips, uh, you know, he's consistently underthrowing the receivers. His accuracy is an issue. He's missing uh, backs in the flat, and the receivers uh, are short near the sidelines uh, and uh, and it's happening at an alarming rate you, you're replaying them now here for us uh, he was five for 14 on uh, today uh, two dropped interceptions uh, so he got lucky there uh, he missed Hyatt open deep for a big game uh, he completed one to Robinson but uh, the the throw took Robinson to the ground when he could have had a big gain if he'd been able to stay on his feet he only gained yards on one of eight plays in the 11-11 11 11, uh, drills uh, st- against the starting defense at the end. Brian Dayball was observed screaming so loud that he could be heard 80 yards away. So he's all upset again, and that, this is just getting started. And that's something he needed to work on, his anger management. Uh, <laughs> he has the time. The, here's the issue, really, Nate. Uh, you know, in the past... Uh, Daniel Jones didn't, you could argue he didn't have the talent around him. And that was part of the reason why he was, he played poorly, but now he's, he's got the time. He was in the pocket. You could see he had plenty of time to throw the ball. The receivers are open, but, uh, he's not making the plays. The offense is struggling because of him, not because they don't have the talent. So that's very concerning. We'll have to see what happens. And that's exactly what NFL insider Connor Hughes said. This offense is not due to a poor offensive structure. 
It's due to Daniel Jones. He's the one creating these negative plays. Or really, no plays at all. Just bad look for him and him alone. They now have a true wide receiver one. So that excuse can no longer exist. Malik Neighbors is a highly sought-after rookie wide receiver that we saw in Hard Knocks. There was a possibility that if you know Jim Harbaugh was looking at receiver, which a lot of people thought that he actually was not going to do based on how he ran things, especially in Michigan at the ground and pound, um, but if he were to draft a wide receiver, they would either draft Brock Bowers or trade back to then maybe draft, uh, draft Brock Bowers anyway. So the way I'm looking at this is I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. A lot of people are saying, well, Dan, poor offensive line. People are raving about this boosted offensive line. John Runyon, Jermaine Illuminor. I don't know what else to say. What am, what am I supposed to say? I say that. I don't like Daniel Jones. Oh, it's because of X, Y, and Z. Well, they they put in place a bunch of pieces to fix X, Y, and Z. That's what they focused on. And it's basically the same result. I understand it's practice, but maybe sometimes it is due to a poor offensive structure. Maybe it is due to poor general managing of Dave Gettleman. He ain't there anymore. It's Joe Shane. It ain't uh, Jason Garrett. It ain't Freddie Kitchens. It ain't Joe Judge. It's Brian Dable who helped out Josh Allen a lot. And in Josh Allen's first season without Brian Dable, he had the most red zone interceptions in the NFL. Points taken away from his own offense. I'm not surprised whatsoever because this is fully expected. Dale Jones is not a good quarterback. He just isn't. He had one good season, and the good season was 22 total touchdowns or things that matter, throwing them a lot, he had 15. That's not good. There is no way... Any top 10 quarterback in the past 5, 10 years, if they had 15 touchdowns, you would say, hmm, top 10 quarterback. Hell, you may not even say top 15 quarterback. And that's just, that, that's just the way it is. If Dayon Jones is struggling with a new offense that people are raving about, and honestly, he lost Saquon Barkley, and I do think that that was a big screw-up for the Giants to let him go over $250,000, what am I supposed to do? Yes, I can hate Joe Shane for that, and I can say that was a bad move. Sure, I could I could say that. But if I'm also being told that this new offense is great and improved, and oh, what an upgrade. Well, then I have to take a val I have to take a look at Jermaine Illuminor. I'm going to play this clip again. I have to look, take a look at Jermaine Illuminor moving left when Kayvon Thibodeau is basically barreling through. And if that was a real life play, Daniel Jones may very well end up with another injury because Kayvon Thibodeau would have taken his head off. Just because, and also the running back also missed the block as well. I'm not saying that was his assignment, but he also missed the block too. This is a bad look. And on top of that, the Giants are in an interesting situation. We may see the third consecutive repeated situation where a starting quarterback gets benched due to an injury guarantee. Because, and, and this is the scary part about how this contract was structured. Um, most of Jones's $30 million salary in 2025, so $23 million, is guaranteed for injury. So if Daniel Jones gets hurt, he gets $23 million handed right to him. That's not that great for a guy who has a history of injuries. And I'll say on Hard Knocks, the opening of Episode 4, the first half of Episode 4, was largely based around the Giants trying to trade up with the New England Patriots to number 3 to draft a quarterback. Not a lot of faith in a guy who you paid, uh, up to this point, $80 million for. Not a good look. Yeah. So the Giants themselves. Now, Rich Eisen said, and we talked about this before, how they are absolutely done with Daniel Jones. Publicly, you can't obviously say that. But we're seeing what they were trying to do during the draft, and we see basically how they have responded to what Daniel Jones has been doing, getting hurt, not playing well. You draft Tommy DeVille, you play him a lot. Because, you know, Tyrod Taylor also dealt with an injury. But even then, now you're trying to get a, a rookie quarterback. You tried to help him out, but it looks like it's not exactly working very well. Brian uh, Dable's frustrated, like you said, was it 80 yards away? You could hear him screaming. screaming. Yeah. Yeah. That's not Pretty a good early, look. Brian. Pretty early. Uh, you might try to calm it down, wait till the regular season before you start losing it again. I'll, I'll repeat it again. Bad quarterbacks get good coaches fired. Brian Dable is a good coach. He's gonna get he's gonna get himself fired because Daniel Jones is his quarterback. Yeah, well, I think the Giants one of their big mistakes was uh, not signing uh, Saquon Barkley. It was a two hundred and fifty thousand know dollars. Saquon difference. Barkley, if he stays healthy, 
And the Eagles have the same kind of offensive line uh, production that they had last year. Barkley will be one of the leading runners in the league this year. He's going to have a great year. And he's going to light it up against the Giants because he'll be having extra incentive there. And that's something the Giants could have avoided for an extra 250,000 bucks. Yeah. Come on. That, that, that's just crazy. I, I, uh, I think it's uh, very hard to understand how, that, how they let him go, particularly when the last two years he's been reasonably healthy and uh, he had very good years. So took him, actually, I would say he's the one that took him to the playoffs uh, two years ago, not uh, so much Daniel Jones, as you said. They only have 15 TDs uh, through the air. So I, I, I think Daniel Jones is going to have to run the ball some more. He's getting big, beat up. Uh, more and more as he gets older, two neck injuries he's had, an ACL. Uh, it's um, I think it's not looking good for the Giants. My prediction, Bill Belichick. You're thinking Bill Belichick to the Giants? Yep. yep. Wow. Next wow. year. That that is a that's a crazy prediction. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, I, I predicted it already. Uh, yeah, this no. is a new prediction. We'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll see if it comes true because that that is like I said, pretty crazy prediction. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right-hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.